the best of the week on Relevant Radio. You know, I would thank Ed Morrissey, who sat in for me while I was gone, along with John Harper, two great guest hosts. Ed's a great writer, and he wrote a great piece for Hot Air that I, I want to share with you. But, um, I, you know, I, I don't know how fast you drive. You go a little bit over the speed limit. I don't know. I sometimes find my uh, <laughs> my speedometer creeping up there. Just imagine this situation for a moment. Imagine you're driving down the highway. You're enjoying a quiet moment in your car. You're not paying attention to the speed. Maybe you get a little heavy-footed, too. You know, I don't know. Maybe you're listening to some music, catching up on the Drew Mariani show, whatever it might be, right? And something unexpected happens. Your car right, suddenly becomes a surveillance device. It's monitoring not just your speed, but the speed of others around you. And you think, oh, that's that's ridiculous, right? Well, no, it's not dystopian sci-fi. This is a, a real possibility. Let me tell you what's happening. Ford Motors has filed a patent for a system that could turn your car into what Ed Marcy called a snitch mobile. According to Motor Authority, and this was reported by WTNH, the Ford patent titled Systems and Methods for Detecting Speed Violations was published by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And the system proposes using cameras and sensors to monitor the speed of surrounding vehicles. So if, say, a car speeds by you, right, another car exceeds the speed limit, your Ford vehicle could potentially track that speed, snap a picture of it, send the data to law enforcement. This dude was doing 85 past me, right? And the car sends it off. Your car could be reporting on other drivers for speeding. Now, maybe you're thinking, Drew, that's a great thing, right? And maybe it is. But w- what about what about privacy? What about a lot of other things? Look, Ford is not new to controversial tech ideas. They previously sought to patent a system for self-repossessing cars, which thankfully it did not come to fruition. But this new idea of cars monitoring and reporting on each other raises, I think, a whole bunch of different concerns. Some of these, I mean, of course, they're always cloaked in safety, right? This is something that should keep you safe. But to me, it also gives me a little bit of pause because it could be a step towards a surveillance state. You know, you've got to wonder who's asking for this, right? Is there really a demand from consumers saying, yeah, I want to spend a little extra money for all the surveillance tech in my car? They're already expensive as can be. Uh, It almost feels more like a solution in search of a problem. Remember the good old days when Ford was lauded for its independence, refusing to participate in the auto bailout in 2009? Those days feel like a a distance now. And and there's a broader issue here, too, where we're considering – we're increasingly seeing technology used in a way that it encroaches on your personal freedoms. It's not just about speed monitoring. This kind of technology could be a stepping stone to more pervasive surveillance systems where everything you do is monitored and reported. Kind of Orwellian, right? Like George Orwell's 1984, but with more gadgets. And don't get me wrong. I mean, look, I, safety is crucial. But what are the costs? And are you willing to trade your privacy for the promise of safety. And let's talk about it right now. I'm delighted to have with me Russ White. He's a well-known voice in computer networking. He's an advocate for simplicity and privacy and the decentralized. He's the co-host of The Hedge and the History of Networking podcasts. And uh, he's the author of a book called Unintended Dystopia. It's a book about social media's impact. He joins me today. Good to have you back, Russ. Good afternoon. Hey, Drew, and how are you today? I'm well. I'm hanging in there. Russ, what's your thought on a private company like Ford coming up with a system that would basically become a rolling surveillance machine? Well, the first thing is most modern cars are rolling surveillance machines anyway, which is one reason I'm trying to drive an old car now. (laughs) But (laughs) 65 Mustang. (laughs) There you go. But I think what's even scarier about this is the idea that it would monitor the cars around you. Presumably, they would have something like a license plate reader Mm -hmm. that would say, oh, that car went past me really fast or cut me off or whatever. Um, The system will automatically pull the license plate, figure out who that person is, and if nothing else, send it to their insurance company. Well, yeah, I find that a little disturbing. You talked about safety. I think... That part of what's happened here is, and and I don't want people to take this wrong or anything, but we've become kind of a feminized, safety-oriented culture that will take any, do anything 
to not take any risk at all. And that is really just not good for the human person. So how do you balance safety? Because I think it's a, a great idea, you know, um, with personal privacy, which I think it's a terrible idea too, if it can be used as a stepping stone to greater surveillance or other things. Yeah, this is always the question. But I think what happened here or what's happening here is that we have kind of gotten our trust boundaries out of whack. Mm -hmm. So in my view, you trust the people who know the most about you and care about you the most. So for instance, I trust my mom with almost everything. I trust God with everything. I trust my mom with almost everything. But the further distance somebody has away from you, as far as them caring about you or having your best interest at heart, the less trust you should have in them. And the question is always, the government and government agencies and even through companies like Ford trying to regulate the people the way people drive, yep. they want to say they have your best interest at heart, mm -hmm. but do they really? I was thinking the same thing, Russ. I'm thinking, you know, there are people, and, and again, I want to be careful with what I say because some people may really take advantage of it. I think there's some insurance companies out there that say, hey, put this little box in your car, and if you're a safe driver, this is great. You're going to get a discount. But it's also a way for the insurance company to say, hmm, this person forgot it had the box in there. Boy, they break pretty hard. Boy, they drive pretty fast. Boy, yeah. you know, and this new technology is, again, but just to be fair here, I mean, Ford just patented it. It's not coming out in any vehicle yet, but but it is a look down the road. And I think it's important to see what might be coming. Yeah, you know, this type of technology, if it can lead to widespread surveillance of, of drivers, I've got a privacy concern there, but I also, I have a concern about the insurance lobby. You know that the insurance lobby is going to want this data, right? And what would that mean to insurance costs as well? I mean, there's going to be a lot of other ways that this stuff could be used. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And even imagine this, right? Well, that person drives really fast and kind of a little bit crazy outside of our bounds. So when their child comes up to get car insurance, mm -hmm. we're going to cause their child's car insurance to be higher because they were probably taught by a bad driver mm. or they go into a lot of protest. And, you know, I can see that they're in, in high density situations a lot. They're more likely to have an accident. Right. Therefore I'm going to, I'm going to kill their insurance. Or I'm going to make their insurance more expensive because they just went to five different political rallies and, you know, political rallies just are very dense traffic situations. Or you might drive a greater distance than maybe you initially said you did to the insurance company. There's lots of yeah. different ways that this stuff can, can yeah. happen. Let me grab a quick caller to Kim is in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Kim, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Drew. I would love to see this technology in vehicles because I've noticed I am getting so much more anxious when I'm driving. I fear for my safety. Every time I'm driving around, people are never following the speed limit. They're running stop signs. They're riding on my bumper. It used to be once in a while, yep. but I feel the way people drive is very disrespectful for yep. others. And yep. if they had something in their cars and some sort of way that they know they're being watched, yep. That's, I think it would just help the safety so much for people. Hey, hey Kim, thanks for sharing that. It's funny. I was driving I, I, the other day, I forget where I had to go, and I saw two cars who were racing, you know, in between the, the I was like on a four lane road. They were zipping, and I, I think the guy almost killed me. He cut, he cut the car in front, of, in front of me off. That guy slammed on his brakes. I'm thinking, yeah, in a situation like that, if I was a cop, I'd love to pull him right over, right? And in a situation like this, clearly, he could be be reported. Nick, you said the same thing to me just a minute ago. You said you're seeing more aggressive driving. What are you saying? Yeah, I I, I see it all the time. I mean, I've only been driving for half my life, but I, yeah. I I see more aggressive driving, and I've seen articles that say there post pandemic there's been a rise in aggressive driving. Well, why is that? Do you have any idea? You know what the article said? I think law enforcement just doesn't pursue it as much for. For one reason. That's interesting. Wow. Well, Kim, thank you. I guess it would bring a, a little bit of reprieve. I, you know, there's good and there's bad in both of us. Again, the whole safety issue is a, is a big one. Well, hey, Russ, thanks for making time for me. Always good to talk with yeah. you. Yep, it's great. Appreciate it. That's Russ White. Hey, like what you just heard? Then share it with your family and friends. And thanks for listening.